is Shivani Patel, an application engineer with Go Engineer. Today we're going to use a simple motion study to analyze the motion and loads of this claw assembly. This assembly is mainly made of coincident and concentric mates, with a very important gear mate in the center. Opening a new motion study loads the view that I began the motion study in. And we'll be using the highest level motion analysis, which you can activate through the add-in located under Tools, Add-ins, SolidWorks Motion. Notice that this requires SOLIDWORKS Premium. Within Motion Analysis, we have access to gravity, contact sets, loads, dampers, springs, and motors. To add a rotary motor, I pick a circular face and add 0.1 Hz for a slow rotation. This adds a rotary motor to the Motion Analysis design tree. I need to see the gears move based on their geometry and not the gear mate. Since Motion imports all mates, I need to go into the mates folder and suppress the gear mate. Gear mates only factor in the ratio of the circles and not the gear teeth, which you will see with these orange highlighted circles as I suppress this mate. Supplying a no penetration contact will allow the geometry of the gear teeth to drive the motion. I should also add contact between the two claws so the motion study will know when they collide. That's the basic setup. So we can run the calculation by clicking the icon in the left hand corner. Since I've set the animation to play as the study calculates, we can see that the gears will work as designed. Now watch as the motion study slows for a moment as it calculates the claws motion and then allows the claws to move through each other. To see this interference with better detail, right click the top level component and scroll to check interference. When you do this, be sure to have the gray line at the end of the animation. Alright, let's check the two claws. Clicking find now runs through the existing calculation and saves any frames that are touching or interference. I'm interested in the stresses when they first touch, so clicking jumps to that frame and now I'm going to use it to bring it into simulation. I could potentially set a time frame, but for speed I'll just use one frame. Simulation prompts me to include a material, so I will click yes and apply ABS plastic. The standard ABS does not include yield strength, so I've created a custom material to include it. After this loads, the next simulation icon activates and it's going to rerun the motion study to gather the loads. While this loads, let's go ahead and look at a few of the other symbols. My orientation and camera view icon is crossed out. This means that even if I rotated the view or moved my parts, the motion study would reset to the original orientation. If I want to change this, I would use the update key after making my orientation changes. The other button with the lightning bolt causes an automatic updating. Any changes you make, like view orientation or view style, get automatically saved wherever you have set the gray line. Scrolling down to the bottom of my motion study tree, I can see a simulation results folder has popped up. There's also a new diamond key where the simulation calculation occurred. Moving the gray line to this diamond lets me review the results. Clicking the third simulation icon that is now activated lets me choose a result plot to save. To see the stress concentrations with more ease, I can isolate the claw arm by right clicking going to isolate. This has been Shivani with Go Engineer. I hope this video has helped you understand how to use the motion study tool.